Welcome to another special on the COVID-19 virus. This is uh, one of our prayer and ministry programs. Uh, we're excited to be here with a pastor friend of ours, and we're going to get into some specifics. But before we do, we just want to remind you that we are not here to be your news and your answer people for all things COVID-19, but we are here to give you spiritual guidance and encouragement on all that's happening during this global crisis. During this time of crisis, we'll continue to bring special programming to you each and every day, Monday through Friday, 1.30 p.m. Pacific time if you're in the San Francisco market or 3.30 p.m. Central time in the Chicagoland market. We also are ac across the globe on Roku, uh, Android, and Amazon TV. And we just want to encourage you to tell your friends and family about this program. Uh, let them know that there's encouragement uh, from a biblical perspective and that we're here for you. You can also call our prayer for Care Force prayer line, 888-235-9907, and we will have people there to pray with you about your concerns and whether you're anxious or whether you're struggling through something, uh, whether it has to do with COVID-19 or not. We would like to encourage you to call and, and join with us in prayer. We'll be here for you, 888-235-9907. The Bible verse for today that I'd like to, to lead with here is, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's Joshua 1.9. I want to welcome our special guest here with us, Pat Peglo. He's senior pastor of Moraine Valley Church. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good to be here. You know, as we look at this scripture from Joshua, um, how is it that we can be comforted with what's going on today? You know, I think as believers in Jesus, we can actually be comforted in a real special way because God's not only with us, but He's in us by His right. Spirit. Amen. And, you know, He's down as close as our heart and in our heart and able to walk with us and do things that even Old Testament saints weren't able to experience. So, yeah, I find great comfort in the presence of the Lord with us, around us, before us, in us, yeah. and uh, He can do things we can't do. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, where I absolutely. find my comfort there, absolutely. brother. You know, there's a lot of people that are watching and you, you know, you may be sitting at home right now and you're not sure what tomorrow's going to bring. You know, maybe you've uh, lost your job or your job's on hold. Um, I think we need to pray real quick for those people and, sure. just, and just offer them a word of encouragement and comfort. Uh, would you mind leading us in prayer? I'll do that. Sure. Father, we want to come before you right now. And Lord, there are people who have just immediately been cut off from their jobs and their incomes. And Lord, uh, where, where do they go? Lord, we're coming to you and asking for your mercy. You say your mercies are new every morning. I want to pray for their provisions, Lord. I pray that the body of Christ will come around them at this time. And Lord, that we will carry one another. And Lord, that you would also carry their hearts, Lord, because you know what? There's a lot of anxiety that goes with that. And so, Father, I pray for those who have lost their jobs, provide what they need in these days, uh, Lord, both financially, materially, but even spiritually, Lord, for their own hearts. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, Pastor, I'd love to uh, just give you the floor here for a little bit and just uh, speak your heart to those that are watching. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Sure. Absolutely. You know, um, there seems to be two pandemics that are running side by side at this time. Obviously, we have the coronavirus, but there seems to be a pandemic of anxiety that's going on at the same time. And I'm here today really not to beat you up about anxiety and tell you, you got to trust God more. Um, I believe you're doing that. But I want to give you some practical help today on how we can experience God's peace right there in the midst of our anxiety. I'm going to be sharing from Philippians chapter 4. You know, we haven't found a solution to the coronavirus yet, but we have been given a solution in God's Word centuries ago uh, for our problem of anxiety. And that's just what I want to share with you today. Philippians 4, basically, here's the message. When we turn our anxieties into our prayers, God will give us peace. Listen for that as I read the passage. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. 
And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I just want to break that down real quick for us. Starts off, be anxious for nothing. There's a lot of things to be anxious about right now. Obviously, people are anxious about getting the virus itself and how serious that can be. We got people that are anxious in the fact that they've lost their jobs. There's others that are anxious in that they've lost 40% of their income or their wealth in their retirement. And actually, we're to the place, believe it or not, we're actually anxious whether we have enough toilet paper. So whether it's big or small, God tells us, be anxious for nothing, not one thing. And then he says, well, what are we supposed to do then? He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. God's prescription for our anxiety is, is that our anxiety should really become our prayer prompters. They become the things that form our prayer list. They're the things we pray about. And so when we are walking with anxiety like this, that should be my reminder to turn that into prayer. But then he tells us how we are supposed to pray. With thanksgiving. You know, as we come to God in prayer, we're going to come with an attitude and actually a practice for many of thanksgiving. He doesn't say wait until the prayer is answered, then thank God. He's saying right there in the midst of the anxiety at that time, we're to come to God with an attitude of thanksgiving. We, there, there's many things we can thank him for. There, we can thank him for what he is doing in our life right now. I know that circumstances can be rough and things can be really difficult in our life, especially in this time. But you know, God is doing things. He's doing things in our heart that might never happen except for in these kind of circumstances. And God's going to do things in our lives. And he's even changing ways of lives as people are being locked in and quarantined in their homes. Habits that we formed are being blown out the walls. And we're learning new ways of living and relating that really could be good things in the long run. So there's things we can thank God for in the midst of this. Well, then, what do we pray about? Let your requests be made known to God. I like this. You know, we're taught to pray God's will, you know, for God's will. Here's a verse when it comes to anxiety. God's saying, pray your will. Pray your heart. What's your request? You know, this is a time to be radically honest with God about what's going on in your heart. It's not, it's not a time to pray my prayer list. God, bless the church, bless the pastor, bless the missionaries, bless my kids, fix this problem. When it comes to anxiety, it's a time to be radically honest with God about what you want to see him do. And when we do that, we see in the next verse what happens. When we turn our anxieties into prayers, when we do it with thanksgiving, being radically honest with God with what's going in our heart, he says this, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God gives us his very peace, the peace of God. It comes from him. He shares his peace with us. And I love it. He says, it surpasses comprehension for those, those of us that have experienced that. What he's saying here, it blows your mind. It doesn't make sense. Here I am in the midst of circumstances that I should be full of anxiety, and I got peace, and I got joy, and I got a song in my heart. You see, God gives us a peace that goes way beyond our ability to put it in words to understand it. I just want to close by sharing with you maybe how can we practically put this verse into practice. I want to tell you a story. When I was back in seminary, um, obviously I was going to school full time, working part time on the side to provide for my wife and myself. And uh, she was pregnant with our first uh, daughter, Courtney. During that time, I was working at a trucking company, and at that company, I hurt my back pretty bad. And so I was out of work. 
I didn't have the ability to work because I was hurt so bad, yet I had the normal bills to pay, but put on top of it the bills for a baby as we're trying to pay, pay for a pregnancy, then the bills we had to pay for the medical expenses for my back. So I was full of anxiety. How am I going to pay these bills? How am I going to provide for my family? How, how am I going to my future? You know, what's going to happen with my body and my ability to work? I had all these anxieties. And so what I did to uh, practice this verse is I took out a piece of paper and I wrote down three columns. The first column, I named every anxiety one by one. I mean, my heart was so full and entangled. Literally, I had 21 anxieties that I listed on this list that were just all intertwined in my heart and my mind. I listed them one by one. Then what I did is I confessed every one of them as sin. He says, do not be anxious. And I was anxious. I wasn't able to trust God at that time. And so I went through each one. I confessed them as sin. And then I thank God. God, what you're doing in my heart right now, the lessons you teach me, what you're going to do. And I was thanking him for what was going to happen in my life. And then I went down to the last list. I was radically honest with God. This is what I want you to do. This is what I'd love to see you do in these circumstances. And as I went through this practice of this verse, God really did give me a supernatural peace. It went beyond my ability to understand it. All I know is it was happening in the midst of all the craziness of my life at that time. I was able to walk with a peace of heart and a peace of mind and a joy in my heart that I knew came from the Lord. And I know you can have the same even in this time. But it doesn't come because you learned the truth of Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It'll come when you practice the truth of Philippians 4, 6, and 7. That's what I want to share with you. Guys, these are tough times. I get it. God really can meet us and give us a peace that just blows our mind and other people's apart as they see the way we walk in these days. Love you guys. Pat Sterpeglo, that was phenomenal. Thank you, I appreciate it. And you know, if you're watching again, I wanna encourage you, call our Care Force prayer line, 888-235-9907. You know, he's been talking about anxiety and fear and how do we deal with that? You know, one of the things that you said at the beginning was a pandemic of anxiety, that we're dealing with that. You know, I find it interesting how this isn't so different than what we see in our lives generally. And I know we're dealing with something completely unprecedented as right. far as this virus goes. But what I mean by not that different is how often we deal with struggles in our life. And it's a, when I say a, a small struggle, okay, if we look at the virus itself, it's an issue, right? But all these things that begin to surround it, we've got these physical situations, you know, again, like you said, toilet paper, we've got jobs at stake, we've got all these different things that become part of our pandemic of anxiety, where it's no longer about just that that individual issue of the virus, but it's about a life of reality, a life reality change, right? And so that, that anxiety just overtakes us if we're not careful. And if we haven't grounded ourselves in God, you know, and I think that's much of what you were talking about. Amen, brother. Exactly. I, I think that uh, if there's ever a time when it isn't just uh, quiet time as usual, kind of the verse a day keeps the devil away, <laughs> um, it, it's really a time to let God's word dwell in us richly. Uh, you quoted one of many promises right at the start of the show. The, these promises are real. God is faithful to his word. He loves to be faithful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he exactly. loves to put himself on display and show he can do these things he promises. Yeah. And it's a time for us to know his promises like this one and to go to God and, and just, you know, I, I kind of encourage the people at our church, this isn't about saying your prayers, you're talking to God. Yeah. And praying is talking to God, not just going through my list. And if there's ever a time, because like you're right, this is the coronavirus now, but anxiety is one of the biggest issues in our country, yeah. even when we don't have these kind of things going on.
Yeah, and I this think is much just of our, put on steroids. Right, and I think yeah. much of our anxieties right now as Americans aren't even necessarily so focused on this corona situation, but the situation at large, which is being created by so much of yes. the um, ex exasperated, um, exacerbated, if that, is that how you say the word, right. um, yeah. situations around it, you know, where this virus has taken hold, but it's much bigger than that because we as as Americans, I think, don't really put our trust in something that is grounded, you know, and so we we're looking at trusting in toilet paper. And again, I get it. I mean, believe me, I have I have six kids at home and I have kids that are starting to come home and I'm looking at, OK, how do I make sure that everybody's taken care of? Because I want to make sure my family's covered. But when it comes down to the basics, am I spending my time worrying or am I spending my time praying and saying, God, wh what do you need of me? How do I not only minister to my family, but how do I go beyond ourselves into ministering to others at this time too? You preached that well, Greg. I don't know what else to add, brother, <laughs> but you're exactly right. Yeah, well, let me, let me uh, read a scripture real quick here. Psalms 56, three says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? You know, when we're not dealing with fleshly issues, that's an easy scripture to read and kind of just pass right by and go, yep, yeah, I get it. I, what can flesh do to me? No big deal. But when our flesh is at stake, when, when something of the flesh is, is uh, our trial, it's hard to read that and go, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, what can flesh do to me? No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, brother? Life is real. The flesh is real. The world is real. Yeah. We feel that. And that's why I said, I'm not here to beat up people today that are struggling with anxiety or fear. I get it. This stuff is real. Lose yeah. your job. How am I going to provide for my kids? Yeah. There's people hoping to retire in a couple of years and their wealth just dropped, you know. And, yeah. and so it's real. It's real. The flesh, the reality of the feeling of it, the the way Satan puts it on steroids as he jumps in, especially with us, to, to make it worse. Uh, the good news is I, I keep on reminding myself and others there's a greater reality. Yeah. <laughs> this is real. Some yeah. people kind of deny it. Oh, no, 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 it is real. Right. But we have a greater reality in God and his truth and his ability to carry us in that. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I just want to remind you to call our care force. Our prayer people are there for you. Our, we have volunteers ready to pray with you. 888-235. 9907. You know, you've been pastoring now for, I think you said, close to 40 years? 35. 35. Right. Don't, don't want to go too far there, right? There you You're go. not old enough to be pastoring for 40. There you go, brother. Um, what are some of the stories through the years that you've heard of God's faithfulness as they would apply to the situation we're dealing with today from people in the church? Uh, like anxiety you're sure. referring yeah. to? Or, you know, I, I, I think of one, a young woman who just, she was wrestling with her anxiety, was deeply out of control. And uh, she struggled with it for years. And I remember as I walked her through this passage, I walked her through these particular uh, steps on how to make it practical. She followed it. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget her coming back and saying to me, you know what, you need to, you need to tell the other people in church about this. It really works. Yeah. I think of another situation of a woman that had a, a very serious lung issue. And she was actually on a ventilator. And uh, they kept on trying to get her off the ventilator. And she was literally for weeks after the surgery they had, and she wasn't able to because the anxiety got so big, they had to keep on keeping her on there. I went and visited her in the hospital. We ended up talking about this passage. I shared this truth. I shared the step-by-step -step process. That night she practiced it. The next day she got off the event later. God gave her the peace to be yeah. able to walk through that. So I guess what I tell people, you know, I'm not the young, cool guy with the hair <laughs> as a pastor, <laughs> but I've lived long enough to see that God's word is true. Yeah. And I've yeah. seen this passage true in other people's lives, and I know it can be true even in the midst of these days. Yeah, absolutely. I have a daughter with Down syndrome. Um, her name is Liberty. And uh, when she was 11 months old, she had to go through open heart surgery. She had three holes in her heart. And um, at the time I was, you know, heavily involved in ministry and I, had, you know, I've read the scriptures through over and over. Um, but I hit a moment where I just remember sitting in my car, we had gotten out of one of the doctor appointments and they said, you know, she's not healthy enough to go into surgery. We're not sure she's going to get healthy enough, mm. but take her home and, you know, we'll see her in a week and see if she's at that point of being healthy. And we got in the car and I buckled into her car seat and got in the front seat. And I just remember sitting there not able to drive, just lost. Like, what sure. do I do? I'm gonna lose my daughter. 
um, I trust God, but right now I'm not willing to give this up. Like this isn't okay with me. If, if my daughter is no longer mm -hmm. here, God takes her home, I'm not okay with that. Um, and I remember going home that afternoon and praying and just like, God, just give me a peace about this. And, and when I finally was able to pass that off, it didn't change my reality. I mean, my, my anxiousness, my lack of faith in God or my lack of faith in his will didn't change my reality. Mm -hmm. But my faith in understanding what his desire was, was better than my desire, allowed me to relinquish that anxiety and that fear and, and allow him to be my peace. You know, and you talked about peace when you were talking. I mean, what can people do specifically uh, during this time if they are feeling anxious? You know what, I think too, I like what you just said, Greg, you know, the perspective of God's word is so important. Um, when I get the, what I call greater truth, because I think what's going on is true and real, sure. but there's a greater truth, there's a larger picture, there's a greater perspective. And I like to look at things from heaven's shores yeah. and say, God's doing something here that's, that we just don't understand. Right. One of the things that has been a big part of my own personal life and ministry, Greg, is I tell people that uh, there's things in life that are bigger than I'm strong and smarter than I'm smart. These are, <laughs> these are one of those times. Yeah, yeah, but absolutely. you know what? God doesn't give us specific answers, but he gives us general s wisdom on what he's doing in our life in the world. Yeah. For one thing, we know everything he's doing, according to Romans 8, 28 and 29, he's not just causing good, that means my life's going to turn out good on this, but what he is doing, according to the next verse, conforming me to the image of his son. Yeah. The good is he's making me more like Jesus no matter what I'm going through. Yeah. And there's other truths like that. So I think claiming God's promises, you brought one at the start, I brought one here, and just seeing life from God's perspective are, are two things that can kind of re, refocus us, get us back because yeah. when we go out in the world, we're going to be shaken and all these realities, but we need a time to get back together and be with God and right. see these things. Yeah. Well, I'd like to pray, but real quick before I do, I just want to read one more scripture that kind of goes into what we were saying. Uh, Isaiah 26, verse 3 says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is Amen. stayed on you. And I think that stayed Amen. is such an important word because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Mm. You know, I'm on our worship team at church, and when we sing Cornerstone, it's a song, mm. I, don't, I don't know if you know the song or not, but I love it because it just reminds me so often we become wobbly, we become frantic in moments, but God is always there that, as that cornerstone in our life, that rock. Amen. You know, so I'd like to go to prayer um, and, and just pray for those, again, I know we kind of did the beginning of this, this show, but uh, again, if you're here and watching and you are feeling anxious, if you're feeling lonely or you're struggling with, how do I deal with this? What am I going to do tomorrow? Uh, call our Care Force line, 888-235-9907, and we will have volunteers there waiting to pray with you. But if you wouldn't mind just praying for those that may be nervous calling or maybe don't want to pick up a phone and talk to someone, sure. but are sitting there just wondering, what do I do? If you wouldn't mind praying Let's for them. Father, we want to come before you right now, and I love what Greg just said. Uh, you'll give us peace when our mind is stayed, when it's fixed, when it's locked into you. And Lord, I, I want to pray for those who may be nervous and say, man, should I call? Should I not? Is this, is this for me now? God, I pray your Holy Spirit would move them. Would you speak to their heart with that still small voice and say, this is the way, walk ye in it. So Lord, I pray they would pick up the phone. I pray that they would call. Lord, we learned here today, prayer is one of the means through which you communicate peace to us. So I pray for those at home today that are wrestling. Lord, would you, would you give them the nudge to pick up that phone and call? And Lord, to somehow through a brother or sister come in contact with you in a fresh way to experience your peace. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And Heavenly Father, as we just come before you, as we begin to get close to the close of this show, Lord, I just want to just play, pray a blessing over those that are watching this, this program right now, Lord. Maybe they're struggling with anxiety, Lord. And I just want to remind them that you are God, the rock. You are the God of our salvation. You are the God of our comfort. And you are the God in the midst of our trials. Nothing that is happening is surprising to you. Nothing that is happening is above you or beyond you. And I just pray that we would, as believers, Lord, begin to just trust you in all things. Lord, that we would come to you for comfort. 
Lord, and more than anything, that we would trust you in spite of all that's going on in our tribulation, in our trials, Lord, that you would be that rock that we, that we come to. We thank you in advance for all you're going to do during this, Lord. We don't know what the outcome is going to look like, and we know that many will get sick, many will struggle, Lord, but we know that you are our salvation, and we just praise you in advance for all you're going to do. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, once again, if you are watching today and you're just wondering what the next step should look like for you, and I don't know what you're going through. I don't know if you are just happen to tune in uh, accidentally, um, although I would say it's not an accident because I believe this is a destination for you if you happened upon this show. And maybe you're not a believer and you're wondering, what do I do? What am I supposed to do if I get sick? If you don't know where you will spend eternity, I want to challenge you. Go to tln.com backslash salvation. We've got information there about what it means to be a believer, what it means to understand what Christ did in your life. You know, I can tell you this, you are in a wonderful place if you're asking that question. And I'm just going to pray that you would just either call our number that's on your screen or go to our site. Again, tln.com backslash salvation um, and read a little bit about what God has done for you and, and because of what his son did on the cross. Um, any last words for our audience as we're, as we're closing the show down? I love what you just said, brother. Um, people really need Jesus. So many people are like the older brother or the prodigal son. They're kind of good people. Yep. They've been living their life saying, well, do I really need Jesus? I'm not a bad person. Even at our best, we fall way short of God because he compares us to Jesus, yep. not to each other. And so I just want to affirm to you, brother, um, whether you're out there today and if you're a person who is a good religious moral person or you're a person who's in the depths of all the craziness of this life, we all need Jesus. He's our hope. He died for our sins. And that when we trust him, not only will he forgive our sins, he'll come into our lives. He'll live inside of us and navigate this life with us. It's really good, really good. You know, as a church, I'm sure you guys are having to make some adjustments and some shifting as we're going through this time. What are yes. your guys, what are you guys up to right now as, as far as the church goes? Everything's turned upside down, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we had a big meeting yesterday with our whole staff talking about what are we going to do. And we even kept the six feet distance and all our uh, chairs and things like that. Um, we, we've moved to a total online service for okay. this week. Um, we're already talking about if we all get shut into our homes, how we're going to handle it. We're looking at how do we minister to our uh, church as an online church? Yeah. How do we minister to seniors and those who aren't really Facebook and online people? Yeah. So uh, we're, we're looking at ways on how we can, and it's kind of great because I see it as an opportunity. Yeah. And my guess is we'll probably start some things that go well beyond this coronavirus sure. that'll make us even more effective in our yeah. ministry. Well, it's always amazing when we look at change. Change can be good or it can be bad. Yeah. But we know that one thing is true. If we focus our eyes on Christ, he will allow us to see that change and be able to accomplish his thing, his purpose through it. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Just want to remind you that are watching, we will be on throughout this crisis every single day, Monday through Friday, 3.30 p.m. Central Time, 1.30 p.m. Pacific. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.